Welcome back to the lab folks. So if you watched my last unboxing video, I think it's two videos ago, you'll see that this package came up but I excluded it from that day. That's because I wanted to do a, a separate treatment of this. i sure I know what this is. Yeah, I don't know how to get into it, but. Okay, so, um, I guess uh, AliExpress kind of noticed that I was buying a lot of stuff off them and maybe they noticed me doing videos about it or not, I don't know, but they did contact me and they wanted to know if I wanted to receive something for them for, for review. So I said, sure, as long as uh, I can review it the way I want to review it and I can say it's a piece of junk if it's a piece of junk. Uh, or say it's good if it's good. So they said, yeah, uh, you do you and uh, we'll help you out. So yeah, you all know how much I enjoy AliExpress stuff. It's my, it's my go-to location for fun stuff in electronics. And uh, you know, a lot of the stuff is actually really good. Like, uh, it, you know, this is my second one of these. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna order up another one for another project I'm thinking about. But these are, these are really, really good. And lithium battery chargers and battery management units that I've got, they, I actually use those things in projects. I actually put them into custom repairs for customers and modifications for them and stuff like that. So, uh, it, you know, you could get all sorts of stuff. I mean, you get stuff like this. You, get, uh, you, know, the, you look around my lab here and there's, there's, there's just literally tons of stuff that I've gotten off of AliExpress and 90% uh, of it is incredibly useful and about 10% of it is just for fun to see if it works. I mean, I just, you know, I take it out and I play with it for a while. But what this is, this is a, a Finerci USB meter. That's a very nice little packaging for it. Now I looked ahead, um, I went online to Finerci. They've got a, a very comprehensive manual on it. Now this one is the FNB 48S. So this is like their like one of their mid-range models. It's not their latest and greatest. And it's the you know it's the open frame style. I think the FNB 48P has got the it's got the closed in frame on it. That doesn't bother me one way or the other. And uh, well there it is. Really nice packaging. That's that's handy to have something like that. Keep it in. That's nice. I'd like to quickly show you the the manual for this thing. I mean it, it's it's extensive to say the least. I think it goes uh, to 28 pages. So a lot of information about this device here and uh, you can just go down through the the index here you can see what a fantastic amount of uh, stuff it'll do a little description of the performance of it and its uh, specifications accuracy and other specifications over here and here's the main page so this this is the, the page that comes up when you turn it on it's called the concise page it gives you the voltage current and uh, the wattage the record page. I think this is for recording, uh, doing your, your battery analysis and stuff like that. This is the uh, charging page. Uh, so it deals with you know, what kind of protocols it's using, uh, looking at the data lines and stuff like that. And this is like a little oscilloscope page here, which allows you to look at the waveforms. And uh, each one of these pages, by the way, I mean, you can you can dive down into them and do other things. Like you can you can set the triggers. If uh, you can set it to automatically trigger, you can set the different triggers that you want. And it goes into more detail on that a little bit further down. This is the wire resistant and you know analysis page. It'll tell you if the cable you're using is any good or not. Uh, apparently, they do have an application for it. I don't know if I'm going to use that or not. I'm not going to get into that today because that's just going to take a long time to download that, it's connected up, and configure it. You can also change the language, change the wake up, Bluetooth switch. Mine doesn't have Bluetooth. Mine is the one without Bluetooth, so I don't have to worry about that. Gravity direction recognition. Yeah, this is a handy feature. Uh, what this does is it, it, it can tell which way you've got the thing oriented and it'll rotate the screen to that orientation so it's easier to read. Uh, there's no way I can give this, this thing a full treatment. It would take hours to go through all of this stuff. If you're interested at all, what I would suggest you do is uh, get online to Fernisi, download this manual, and have a look through it. And I'll give you far more information than I'm capable of giving you in a short review here. But uh, let me set up to have a look at the device here. I'll be right back. Okay, so here's a look at the back of it. And you can see it's got, uh, well, you can see that it's got the type A input, type C input, micro USB in, type C output. 
Uh, it's a switch there to switch your PD detection on or off. There's your PC ports. Uh, and here's your controls. And this is your navigation button. This is the back navigation. So you get into a menu, you click this and put you back out. And of course we got a USB output port here. Okay, plug it in. I guess that's the boot screen there. Okay, so here is your standard screen. This is the concise page. So this just gives you voltage, current, and wattage. And I think if you press this button here, it gives you an extra digit of resolution. Next page here. So this here would be the record page. So it looks like I've got a, a language problem here and I need to go back to here. And I think, what was it? Language is the sixth one down, 06 there. So let me get in there and go down to language, select English. Click OK. That's better. Now I can read that. All right, so we're in here, we're in here now. So that's its display brightness, standby brightness. So that's the level that it goes down to in standby. You can adjust that. You can adjust the time before it goes into standby. Data transmission, that's the data coming out to the PC through here. The temperature symbol, I think that's just uh, degree C or degree F. Yeah, degree C is what I like. System language, we just, we know that one. Auto wake up. Bluetooth, I don't have. G sensor setting, so you can either have that on or off, I think. Yeah, I like it on. 4.97 volts in it. Let's get a little load on it, see what it does. So let's hook it up here. Let me turn up the load here a little bit. So let's see, we go up to an amp here. That's not getting too warm at that. So let's see, then we'll switch it into the more sensitive mode. And they should just leave it like that. Okay, we'll go over here to this page here. It looks like group eight out of 10 is selected. And so I guess you could start recording at this point here and it is recording. I don't know if you can see that or not, but uh, I hope this can, will focus right down there in the yellow, the what hours are accumulating. And it is accumulating information into group eight. And we've got a, a reading here of minimum, maximum, average for both, uh, for all three, the current, the voltage and the wattage. All right, let's go to the next page. Triggers off, so it's not recording anything on the trigger at this point in time. Okay, so it's taking a very close look at the voltage. I guess there's a, this is coming from just a little wall work type device. So it looks like there's some 60 or 70 millivolts of noise on it. And see how that changes as we change the current. So the current goes down, yeah, the noise goes down. Very nice. I was led to believe by reading the manual that once you're in this mode, using control will allow you to speed up or slow down the sweep. That's what it says here. Long press left button, time base minus, and long press right button, time base plus. That's not what it's doing, it's just cycling through the different functions. Yeah, this control here is, is not very user friendly. So I press down and then rotate it, misreads it, so I press it down and then rotate to that direction, rotate that direction. Yeah, it's not a, it's not an extremely user-friendly little uh, control there. So here, now we have the voltage at the bottom, the current up at the top. And if we bring the current down, so it looks like it, it, it automatically rescales things. That might not be a great idea because it's just, you know, moving stuff all around the screen I thought that would be a lot nicer than it is, but if I can't slow it down from here, it's not going to be that handy to me. And it's auto ranging, drops things around all over the place. I'm not, I'm not a great fan of how it works. I'm a great fan of the concept though. Over here now, this here should allow me to test my cable. So let me see if I can set up for that. Okay, we've got to plug directly into this little thing right now. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll take the reference here. I'm hoping this is going to be very handy because like I said, I've got, I've got a bunch of cables I really want to test. So we'll bring it up to an amp. Okay, we'll take our reference measurement 
1.0057 amps. Now we'll unplug it, plug the cable under test into it, which is this one. This one here is about two meters long. And it should come back up now and tell us 0.78 ohms. So, yeah, you can see that the voltage drop has been substantial. Now the current is still up there because we have a constant current load on it. But we've got, uh, you know, 0.7 of a volt drop. We're down at about 4.2 volts, 4.3. Difference 0.77, so almost 0.8 volts. So yeah, th this is not great for this kind of current. So let's, uh, you know, let's move the current way down. Let's bring it down to 100 milliamps and see what the uh, voltage drop is like. Yeah, so that's that's acceptable, right? 4.9 volts. I know a lot of devices will, will be fairly tolerant to voltage drops, but some devices aren't going to be. But yeah, that's a handy feature. I like that feature. That's going to come in handy. So I'm going to cook up my Furnersi soldering iron to it and see what it tells us about that. Okay, the Furnersi iron is plugged in. I have it here. It's in standby mode. Oh, it says low voltage. So it's not... It's not actually doing the PD trigger. Enter trigger high voltage, let's say okay. Protocol detection. So we do notice that it comes up here as QC2 and it comes up and this boots up properly. So now we can just go back here. Okay, and so we'll go down to Qualcomm QC2, select that. We'll put it up to 20 volts. Maybe I have to restart this. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so you have to restart the device so that it can communicate back and forth. That makes sense. All right, so um, what if we get out of here? Let's turn this on. 12 volts, drawing 1.7 amps, 20 watts. Even though we're supposed to be at the 20 volt range here. I don't know what's going on there. Do I have the iron set up for 12 volts? So it is set for 20 volts. But all we're getting through this is 12. I don't know why it's doing that. So 5 volts, 9 volts. It goes up to 12 volts, but it won't go to 20 volts. That's a little bit disappointing that it won't go there. But uh, it will pass on the 12 volts to the iron, although the iron is going to be running at a much hampered rate here. So at least it's smart enough to be able to see that that 12 volts. Well, that's it, folks. Uh, let me give you my summary of it. Okay, so what do I think of this? I think it's uh, I think it's nice. I think it's very comprehensive. The default pages give you a lot of information, and for most things, it's probably all you really need to know. Uh, but you know, for for this here, the the charging, uh, you know, this is not a situation where we're actually dealing with with charging, so that might be the whole problem with it. But at this page. This page, the default page here, which I really wish was just in six digit mode anyway. And of course, this little graph page here in its default mode is fine. But the thing where it really gets that down is, is in the control. And this is a handy page too, I like this. I'm gonna get some use out of this. But the, the controls need to be updated or changed. Maybe they are in the more recent models. I know there's a, a new higher end model than this one. And uh, maybe they've, they've fixed all that stuff in that one. I think it's, that's the FNB58 or something like that. I'm not too sure. Hey puppy, what you doing over there? And that's where it, it uh, comes guts up for me is is with this. It does have a good a good set of features for types of connectors it has on it. You can hook it up to a PC if you want. There is a Bluetooth available for it. Um, but you're going to have to have the manual close by if you're going to do any of the more interesting things with it. It's um, It's not terribly intuitive but like I say these default pages are very informative and it's probably where you're going to use it mostly uh, would I recommend this device I would it's not that much money I think it's it's about 30 bucks or so just be aware that this control that they put on it here is not the greatest 
And it could be me, it could be my big thick fingers. I might not be using it properly and maybe I'll get a little bit better with it over time. I don't know, but uh, that's the one disappointing thing about it. Other than that, I will say it's probably worth the 30 bucks, especially if some of the features in it are things you're gonna use. Like I'm gonna use this cable measurement feature over the next little while because I've got a bunch of cables I wanna test. I always wanna weed through them, get rid of the, the crappy ones. All right, folks, before I go, I'd like to thank AliExpress again for sending this out to me. That was nice of them. I'll put a link to it down below. They also sent me some discount codes that you can use. I think they're good until the 21st, so for the next week or so. It's always a great thing when you can save some money on AliExpress. Anyway, thanks a lot to you guys too for coming on out. If you like the video, please give it a like. Um, let me know what you think down in the comments, what you think about this device. Also, if you haven't yet, subscribe. It's absolutely free. You get to see me do all sorts of interesting things over time. And uh, in the meantime, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye now.